Congressman, welcome back to the program. The Department of Homeland Security is threatening to take legal action against uh, the state of Texas, or appropriate action is what it says, after this incident in Eagle Pass. What do you expect that is going to mean? Uh, I expect that uh, the federal government will file a suit to stop uh, Greg Abbott and Operation Lone Star from interfering with federal duties. Uh, at this point, Jason, the governor's bragging about blocking the federal government and Border Patrol from doing its job. And in the meantime, they're not taking on any other duties related to border security or immigration in terms of processing people or anything like that. So they're just interfering with the duties of the federal government. Uh, and it's making the situation less safe and worse. DHS considering its legal options here, obviously. What do you think should happen, though? Well, you know, I have said for a while that Operation Lone Star has been a, a rogue operation, that it's more of a political stunt for the governor to try to demonstrate within his Republican primary uh, that he's tough on the border. He needs to get out of the way and let the federal government do its job. And Congress needs to do something on immigration and on border security. Uh, and that has been elusive now for, for several years, even though myself and many others have proposed different kinds of reforms. Those have hit a brick wall for many years now. Of course, Republicans and Governor Abbott say that, that the president can do more just with the stroke of a pen and executive orders. Do, do you think he's doing enough? Well, I think that the Congress needs to step up and do its job. Um, and I also think that the governor could be more helpful in terms of providing money to places like Eagle Pass, Del Rio, uh, San Antonio, Laredo, El Paso, uh, because of what they are dealing with, with this surge of migrants, the governor has hardly lifted a finger in terms of helping these communities with financial resources. So, yeah, I think the president from the executive office should do everything he can through executive order. But that doesn't relieve the Congress from doing its job. And it certainly doesn't relieve the governor of the state of Texas from helping his cities. Congressman, what was your first reaction when you heard the news about what's happening What's happening at uh, Shelby Park there in Eagle Pass? I mean, you know, I, I wasn't shocked because I know that uh, Greg Abbott has made this his number one boogeyman issue. I mean, he uses migrants at this point as political scarecrows to try to scare everybody else. Uh, and so I wasn't surprised about that. But I was, um, I was, it did shock the conscience when you talk about Texas National Guard or DPS basically preventing CBP from rescuing a mom and two kids, an eight-year-old and a 10-year-old kid who drowned. Um, I'll say this, Republicans have gotten very bloodthirsty when it comes to the issue of immigration and border security. And you imagine what it takes for people in uniform to prevent other people from rescuing drowning individuals, uh, regardless of their immigration status or who they are, just to prevent somebody from rescuing drowning people. The callousness and the bloodthirstiness of the leaders uh, who command it or who allow it. What do you mean by, by bloodthirsty there? Because there's a, a lot of rhetoric being thrown around on the Republican side about, you know, the governor saying the only reason we're not shooting migrants is because, uh, you know, the Biden administration would, would charge troopers with murder there. I, I hear the rhetoric on the other side here, too. So, I mean, what do you mean with that description? Yeah, I think it's a, it's an appropriate description. Look, when the governor goes on a radio show, I think, and talks about, well, the reason that we're not going to shoot them is because the Biden administration would prosecute us. Yeah. When he talks about an invasion, when it was exactly that kind of language that got more than 20 people killed in El Paso, Texas, just a few years ago. And then when, when his own state officials block people from saving drowning individuals, yeah, I think you've gotten to a point of being bloodthirsty. And it's, it's uh, like a version of Lord of the Flies where civil rules and even human compassion get thrown out the window because of this kind of fever that Donald Trump set off in the Republican Party a few years ago now. 
the state of Texas says that these the drownings, the unfortunate drownings there happened on the Mexican side of the river, didn't get across to Shelby Park, and it happened even a little farther downstream than Shelby Park. Have you heard anything more on your end about where exactly this happened and whether the state refused to do anything? Uh, yeah, we've heard conflicting reports. Uh, and so I, I don't want to add to the conflicting versions until we're able to verify sure. it. But that's not my best understanding of what happened. And also, Jason, you got to remember, when we think about the credibility of who's presenting an account, this is the state, same state government that stood in front of the world and lied about what happened to the kids at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas. They stood up, the governor stood up and lied. Steve McGraw lied. And it hardly cost anybody over there their job. So it's the same people who I think are telling us lies now. I want to ask about Uvalde in just a moment. Uh, another question, though, about uh, Shelby Park. What do you think Governor Abbott's play is here? Because he's been raising the rhetoric on the right when it comes to, you know, possibly even shooting migrants. The only reason we're not, he said, is because Biden administration might charge them with murder. He's now entangled in this as well. And he just, you know, seems to be relishing it. Uh, this fight with President Biden. What's the governor's play here? Is he trying to be a VP on a ticket? Yeah, I think that Greg Abbott made a decision not to run for president, but he's supporting the harsh anti-immigrant rhetoric and policies of Donald Trump. I think he's trying to be Donald Trump's vice president. I think that he's trying to make a play to be in the final selection, the last two or three people uh, who are considered for vice president. And the only way he does that is to demonstrate to the very, you know, the, the, the heart of the Republican primary base that he's right in line with Donald Trump and his strong, virulent anti-immigrant sentiment. Let's talk about this DOJ report on the Uvalde shooting. It, it kind of built off of what the Texas House of Representatives made last year, what they investigated last year. I, I, any surprises in this to you here? Because we still haven't seen any accountability at all. Uh, you know, it's a very thorough report. Um, and it, it kind of goes over what we've understood, which was it was an abysmal failure of law enforcement to not treat this the whole time as an active shooter situation. Uh, and, you know, what surprised me the most is just the abject betrayal by public officials of these families in Uvalde, Texas. As I mentioned, the governor standing up there and telling tales about what actually happened and then hardly holding anybody accountable. I think that's what's most shocking is uh, if you were Steve McGraw, who's the head of the Department of Public Safety, if you were head of any company, a news organization, a nonprofit, a school, and this kind of incident happened under your command, you would be fired. You would be relieved of duty. And yet Steve McGraw and the top brass at DPS are still there, nothing changed. Uh, that, to me, is is shocking. Last question I want to ask you about 2024, the nomination process for president, obviously underway now with Iowa last week. I'm just curious what you think that uh, President Biden's chances are as we go into this. A lot of talk about his age on one side, but then the other side, we see that he's raised $96 million, a lot of money out of the gate to start the year with. I still believe that President Biden... Uh, can get reelected and will get reelected, whether his opponent is Donald Trump or Nikki Haley or somebody else. Um, you know, I think the president, when he has an opportunity to really spend some of those funds to remind Americans about how he has helped the country bounce back from the start, which was a pandemic, uh, how we have the strongest economy that we've had in decades, uh, and how he's proposed real solutions on the border and in other areas and each time has been rebuffed by a Republican Congress that really is in chaos. You saw them dethrone Speaker McCarthy. There's talk by their extreme members of taking out Speaker Johnson now. So you know, this is a president who has been able to do these things, pass major legislation or shepherd it through Congress uh, without much help from the Republican Party. Congressman, we always appreciate the time. Thank you, sir. Good to be with you.